Now this is a drafting exercise which covers a very simple invention. The invention as you can see here is a pencil which has a lead on one side, a writing element on one side and a rubber on the other end. The modern manifestation of this uh, invention is what we call a, a pencil with eraser, a eraser at the bottom. Now this was patented in the United States in 1858. Let's just take a brief look at this invention. This invention is deliberately a very short one so that you understand it quickly. It's just almost a couple of paragraphs. That's, that's the invention for you. Now, let's just look at this. The United States Patent Office, Hyman Lipman, who's the inventor of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is how it used to be written in those days. Now we had inserted that part for you, draft a title for this patent. Now the specification forming part of letters patent. Now this starts by a statement by the inventor that he has invented a new and useful lead pencil and eraser. And he declares that the following is a full, clear and exact description. Now this remains a modern day uh, requirement that uh, a person who files an application for a patent should give a full, clear and an exact description. The requirement in uh, India is different from what you can see here, but uh, this is uh, uh, something which is a modern day requirement that an exact and a clear and a succinct description should be given. Reference being had to all accompanying drawings and to the letters of reference marked thereon. Uh, drawings do fo form a part of inventions uh, today, more specifically for mechanical inventions. Uh, the inventor continues, I made a lead pencil in the usual manner, reserving about one fourth of the length in which I make a groove of suitable size A and insert this groove into a piece of prepared India rubber or other erasive substance. So it's much broad, it's just not confined to India rubber. Uh, the pencil is then finished in an usual manner so that on cutting one side, one end thereof you have lead B and on cutting on the other end you have exposed a small piece of India rubber C ready for use and particularly valuable for removing or erasing lines figures and not subject to be soiled or mislaid on the table or desk. Now this is the problem that is solved by the invention. Now we had already mentioned that in our, uh, in our lecture on invention as concepts, you need to envisage your invention as a solution to a problem. Now this invention is envisaged as a solution to the problem of not immediately having a rubber or an eraser at your disposal. Now that's the problem that the invention solved. Another problem which you can see that rubber when it's, or an eraser when it's left around, it can get soiled. Whereas if it's at the back of a pencil, the possibilities of it being soiled are less because it would only get soiled when the pencil is used. Or that's what, it, the, the problem of getting soiled or mislaid on the table or desk, or misplacing or not able to find, in, find the eraser at the point when you need it. It's a pretty simple invention, but try to understand even when the description is put in very simple terms, the inventors do take care to address their invention as a solution to an existing problem. Now here the problem was not having the pencil and the eraser in one place. Pretty simple. In making mathematical, architectural and many other kinds of drawings in which the lines are very near each other, the eraser is particularly useful. Now it's been elaborated as it may be sharpened to a point to erase any marks or lines or could be to a point the rubber becomes soiled or inoperative from any cause, such cause is easily removed to be renewed sharpening as in the ordinary lead pencil. Now they say the rubber can get soiled or rubber can uh, become uh, uh, unusable, so you could renew the rubber uh, in, the, in, the, in the words of the inventor by sharpening it. So the rubber envisaged here has to be a hard kind of India rubber which can be sharpened. So just how you sharpen the lead, you sharpen the rubber. Uh, I, I know uh, this is not the current manifestation that's available in the market, but this was one way they got over the problem of not finding the eraser and also got over the problem of uh, tackling soiled erasers. 
I do not claim, now he further continues, I do not claim the use of a lead pencil with a piece of rubber, in, uh, India rubber or other erasing material attached at one end for the purpose of erasing marks. That's a general claim. But what I claim as my invention and decide to secure a letters patent is a combination of lead and India rubber or other erasing substance. No, that is taking uh, the invention to the level of a concept any erasing substance you are trying to generalize it and not confining it to a particular eraser in the holder of a drawing pencil the whole being constructed and arranged substantially in the manner and for the purposes set forth this was a, a way in which uh, inventions could be uh, were, dis, uh, were defined earlier so now the exercise that we need to do is to draft a title for this patent now you need to understand before drafting a title, what are the requirements of a title? Now the act does not, uh, the act does tell you, I mean let us uh, take the relevant provision of the act. If you come to section 10, uh, it tells you that uh, the contents of a provisional specification, uh, contents of specifications, 10.1 tells you that every specification whether provisional or complete, shall describe the invention and shall begin with a title sufficiently indicating the subject matter to which the invention relates. Now, first thing we understand, what is the function of a title? The function of a title is to sufficiently indicate, uh, is to sufficiently indicate uh, the subject matter to which the invention relates. So that's the purpose or the function of a title. Now you know, you have read this and you know what should be the title that sufficiently indicates the subject matter. Now that's, it's a simple way to draft a title in describing the subject matter to which the invention relates. How the title should be, how long it should be, uh, what, what is a clear uh, description, can the controller ask the title to be amended, these are details which you will not file in the act. For that you will have to get into the rules and you will also have to get into the uh, some uh, elements of practice where, where uh, the, uh, the patent office has given some decisions on instances where the patent office can uh, look into and ask for certain clarifications. Now, coming to the question of title. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you, the title is described in Rule 13, which generally talks about specifications. Generally talks about specifications. If you can take Rule 13, which is about specifications, uh, Rule 13, one talks about that every specification whether provisional or complete shall be informed to. Now if you come down to rule 7a, small a, the abstract as specified under clause D of subsection 4 of section 10 accompanying the specification shall commence with the title of the invention. Okay, so the abstract shall commence with the title of the invention. The title of the invention shall disclose the specific features of the invention normally in not more than 15 words. Now you got that, the word limit is there, right there. So your title, if you have to draft a title, one, it should describe the subject matter which we got from uh, section 10 and here it says that it should disclose the specific features of the invention normally in a way you can do it in less than 15 words. Now here is what you need to do. Now when you look at this invention, you know that this invention pertains to a lead pencil but with a rubber at the end. And the lead pencil with the rubber at the end is designed in such a way, you can see it from the drawings here, 
It's designed in such a way that you can sharpen both the lead and the rubber. Now, you could have a very simple title to say that a pencil with an eraser or a pencil with a renewable lead or a, a lead that is being capable of sharpened with a renewable or a, a, a rubber which is capable of being sharpened. Now, there are, you would normally phrase your title looking at what has gone before because you don't want uh, prior art titles to uh, conflict with your invention. So, so it's not hard to develop a title for this. In fact, the, one of the reasons why we took something from the public domain is that you could just search for this patent, the number is given there, and, and you could find out what, how the inventor actually titled this. You could come up with a different title, but the object here was to tell you that titles as per the Indian uh, Patents Act and rules have to be less than 15 words and the title should describe the subject matter of the invention and it should also do it in such a way that it discloses the specific features of the invention. 